Greetings, everybody. This is going to be an introduction to the um, Forsaken series. Uh, Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries, John 8, 12. You know the drill. Uh, I spent uh, three to four months, uh, I'm talking six, eight hours a day, maybe ten, loading a thousand videos on Gab, and, well, it's... I think it was a waste of time, but, you know, whatever. It is what it is. Just like I wasted my time with BitChute, which is uh, muting my audios, and uh, Brideon deleted 242 of my videos one day. Yeah, what a waste. Uh, I've spent a lot of time... But I'm on Minds, uh, Odyssey, uh, I think I've got a few videos on Rumble, Brand New Tube, you know, but I just don't want to spend... It takes a lot of time to load this stuff. It really does. It's very time-consuming. So, uh, I don't know. I keep thinking I'm going to lose my Tube channel, but I'm still here. So, what can you do? Alrighty, um, there's going to come a time when true believers in Christ are going to have to go underground. It's happened in the past, and it's going to happen again. When you read the Bible, the key to the future usually is shown from what happened in the past. I mean, let's face it. You look at the uh, plagues of Revelation, they mimic, in a lot of ways, the plagues of Egypt when Moses uh, was instructed of the Lord to pronounce to Pharaoh, let my people go. And Pharaoh said, oh, no way. And then, of course, Judgment happened, and Pharaoh says, okay, we're going to let you go. And then when the plague disappeared, he was like, eh, I'm changing my mind. Well, finally, when all the firstborn died, I mean, you're talking the firstborn of everyone. I mean, you're talking not just the cattle and the livestock, but all the people, too. Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, there was death big time in Egypt. And finally, they were like, uh, please, will you please leave the, get out of here, please. We, we don't want any more of these things from your God. And Moses is like, oh, yeah, we could do that. No problem. Well, that's the Bob translation. So, but there's going to come a point when Christians are going to have to flee to the wilderness. Revelation 12. I got Bible studies on Matthew 24. I got Bible studies on Revelation 12, which tie into this end time stuff. I got playlists on YouTube. I got playlists on Gab too, but it, they're useless. Absolutely useless. Nobody can see the playlists. I mean, I have to actually post a link for somebody to see the playlist. They're just not visible on my channel in no way, shape, or form. Absolutely horrible. And if this was a new site, I'd understand. But it's been up for five years from what I understand. So there's absolutely no reason for this. I did another video where I think it's more controlled opposition. So whatever god makes those uh decisions of who is and who isn't so i don't know all right but there's going to come a time when true believers are going to have to hit the wilderness revelation 12 to escape the mark of the beast it's coming and the cities are going to be extremely dangerous I mean, they're flooding the land with all these heathen aliens. And the cities are going to be extremely dangerous. They already are. But, I mean, it's going to be open 
chaos, especially if there's an economic crash or there's no food or, or whatever. And that could be planned. You know, the, the no food. During the, uh, I think I, it was a book written by, uh, I think it was Robespierre. He was a Frenchman that lived during the time of the French Revolution. Yeah, I've read a lot of books. But the thing is, the reason the left is called the left, aside from the Bible where, you know, Jesus said the, the sheep are going to be on my right hand and the goats on the left. Well, the Jacobins, the sons of Jacob, you know, Jacob's name was changed to is Ray L. Uh, yeah, well, they sat on the left. They were the assembly that sat on the left. That's why they were called the left. And from what I understand, Robespierre said that when they wanted the revolution, they blocked all the roads going to, into Paris, blocked all the roads. So the farmers in the countryside were trying to get their food into the city to sell, but they couldn't because there were soldiers or whatever what i don't know if they were soldiers or just uh evil people with weapons and you know a farmer against a group with weapons is just not going to be able to fight them right and they kept the food from going into paris well guess what a week or so of that and there's no food in the city and guess what there were riots well, during the riots is when they took power. Something similar to that happened in Russia during the uh, Russian Revolution of 19... Actually, there was two. There was one in 1905. Now, that should have been the, the Tsar's wake-up call. But did he repent? No. Nope. And then 12 years later, in 1917, the revolution was uh, successful. 1905 failed. But, uh, you know, they, the, uh, the plan never seems to fail. Never does. But the thing is, boy, I tell you what, I, I've read a lot of history. A, so much history. I, I just, unbelievable amount of history that I've read. You know, and I'm not telling you this to make you think I'm smart. No, no, it's just. I would have rather read old books than uh, watch television or go to movies. I think the last time I went to a movie, I was on a date with a girl. And uh, it was probably about 15 years ago. Yeah. And I don't watch television, so... But the, uh, the name of the book was uh, Proofs of a Conspiracy. Matter of fact, I think I forget who. Uh, might have been Jefferson or Franklin was the ambassador to France. And when the revolution was going on, they were appalled at how much killing was going on. And they thought about it and they says, you know, maybe I need to get out of here. Because you never know what what might happen to me. But that was when they um, made widespread use of the guillotine. Yeah. And head chopping is in the Bible. Did you know that? Uh, yeah, it is. And that is in Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4. And this has, well, they were uh, killing the priests. Now, the you-know-whos are, will blame the Vatican for what happened in France, but yet Catholic priests were being executed in France by beheading. Does that make sense to you? Uh, me neither. Right. So, Revelation 20, verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them. And judgment was given unto them. 
And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. And a thousand years is just the uh, introduction, people. So, you know. Your modern Bible verses, uh, versions say, on the hands. And then they show, you know, 666 or a, or a barcode or, you know, some other stupid thing. But uh, as somebody that grew up uh, in Greece, you know who you are, pointed out that uh, I don't, I'm probably not pronouncing it right. Trogma can have reference to a cutting or an etching. Uh, that's why it's in the hands, which is why I lean towards it being a microchip in the hand. But you know, people are going to have to, you know, they were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, for the word of God, because they didn't worship the beast. They didn't take the mark. So they got their heads cut off. And I have seen what appears to be invoices for guillotines by a company called Chanel from France, I think Paris, and no, probably not the perfume company. But then again, you never know. Matter of fact, what does Chanel mean? I'm going to look that up real quick. All right, I looked it up. Uh, Chanel can mean canal, or somebody that lives near a canal, or it could mean pipe, as in a water pipe. And no, not something you smoke uh, weed in, which I'm very familiar with, or was, especially in high school. We didn't call it high school for nothing. Yeah. And no, I'm not proud of that. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not sure. I have no idea what, uh, why the company's name is Chanel. But it appeared to be invoices from a company called Chanel with, um, uh, for guillotines imported into the United States. And I'm talking thousands of them thousands of them they're spring-loaded with um, uh, ball bearings so yeah they don't use just gravity I mean they're actually spring-loaded I mean they go ting and then boom, gone right and uh, yeah I mean, Revelation 20 but uh, what pre-tribbers want to ignore is being beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God is a guaranteed ticket to heaven. Absolutely guaranteed ticket to heaven. And then you got people like John MacArthur, very popular TV preacher, says, ah, don't worry about it. You're not going to be here, but even if you were here and you took the mark of the beast, don't worry about it. You're going to heaven anyways because eternal security, once saved, always saved. Where's that in the Bible? Uh, I can't find that anywhere. Well, Revelation uh, says that uh, if you take the mark of the beast, you get to join the, the beast and the false prophet and the uh, man of sin and the dragon. In the lake of fire but hey what do i know you know so there's going to come a time when christians are either going to get their heads cut off or they're going to have to flee to the wilderness revelation chapter 12. and like i say the cities are dangerous they're not going to be able to buy food 
without the mark. I mean, it's getting to the point now, if you don't have the passport, you know, the V passport, you, you're not, oh, you can't go to the store, you can't go to the gym, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't work. It's funny. Uh, you can't go to work, but no problem collecting welfare or food stamps. Oh, but that's different, right? Yeah. So there's going to be people in the wilderness. It's going to happen. Now, I've done a complete Bible study on Revelation 12. So let's not go there. Uh, maybe if I remember this old brain of mine, you know, it's getting senile. But um, I'll try to remember the post links. But Matthew 24 and Revelation 12 and Mark 13 and Luke, I think it's Luke 21, but I'm not sure. Um, I'll talk about what I call the wilderness experience. It's coming. Revelation 12, verse 6. And the woman, which is the church, boy, you, you won't ever hear that in church. Oh, the woman, that's the you-know-who's over in the Middle East that reject and curse and hate Jesus. Yeah, right. I don't think so. That's the whore of Revelation. That's not the woman. The woman's the bride of Christ. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. That's roughly three and a half years, people. Roughly. Um, let's skip down. Verse 11. And they overcame him, the Antichrist, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Does that sound like the modern pre-trib rapture crowd? No. Verse 12, Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman, the church, which brought forth the man-child, and that's Christ. And that happened to, uh, remember when Herod tried to kill all the babies of Bethlehem? Oh, yeah. Uh, what was it, three years old and under? Yeah. Yeah, Herod, what a, what a wonderful guy, huh? I sure hope I don't have to ever join him where he's at. Verse 14. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. Same language that uh, the, the eagle, eagle's wings. Same language that God used for taking Israel out of Egypt. And I did a Bible study on that too. Two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time, which is a year, and times, two more years, and half a time, half a year. So three and a half years where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. You know what this flood is? Third world heathens. The woman is being flooded. It's happening. And I did a Bible study on that too. Verse 16, but, ah, here comes some help. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth, and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. There's going to be an earthquake, people, that's going to swallow up the heathens, probably the cities. And the dragon was wroth, angry, P.O.'d. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, her children, 
which keep the commandments of God and and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. See, the dragon's not wroth if you keep the commandments of God if you don't have Jesus. Or if you have the testimony of Jesus but you don't keep the commandments of God, he don't care about that either. I call them uh, grace as a license to sin Christians. I mean, come on. Is the Bible... Is grace a, a, a license to sin, to murder? No, of course not. You know, and Jesus always taught the two commandments. You know, love the Lord and love thy neighbor. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. You know, if you love your neighbor, you're not going to steal from him, you're not going to kill him. You're not going to play around with his wife, even though she's flirting with you and really good looking and you hadn't had any in a long time, you know. That's a lesson I should have learned, but uh, you know, live and learn. Well, I'll tell you what, I've been spanked by the Lord and so many times my butt still hurts. Yeah. But when we're, well, whoever makes it to the wilderness, there are going to be denominational Christians, churchgoers, whatever, and they're going to be asking, why is all this evil come upon us? I don't understand it. My pastor said we were going to be raptured out of here. Where is Jesus? We can't live in the city. It's too dangerous. What are we going to live off of? There's no food in the wilderness. Well, actually there is. You just don't know what to look for. Do you know that every pine tree, the inner bark, not the, not the outside bark, but the inner bark. You scrape away the outer bark and then the inner bark is kind of a tannish color, beige colored, sand colored. That's edible. Pine trees. The needles. You can make pine needle tea. It's got vitamin C. It'll keep you from having scurvy, which is a real disease, by the way. Sailors used to get scurvy because they'd be out on the, the ocean for so long. And do you know their teeth would fall out of their mouth because their gums wouldn't heal because they had no vitamin C? Yeah. That's why Britain ruled the waves. That's why they were called limeys, because they would take lime trees. And then they would take the lime juice and put it in their water and drink it. And it kept their teeth from falling out. And they would heal. You spend three months at sea with no vitamin C and, uh, oh, wait, spend three months in the ocean with no vitamin C. There, that sounds a little better. And uh, you got scurvy. During, um, uh, in 1905, Japan, who had been given all the modern machinery to build uh, modern warships, decided they wanted a port in China that Russia was occupying. And they asked Russia, and they said, hey, uh, Russia, we would like this port. And Russia said, pfft. Get, get lost, jerk. Well, that's the Bob translation, yeah. So, Japan did a sneak attack, 1905, on Port, I think it's Port Arthur. And they basically, you know, uh, early Pearl Harbor, sort of, kind of, thingy. Now, back in them days, a ship was ran on steam. So, when your ship is at port, and the boilers are cold, the ship just sits there. It's a sitting duck. It's a sitting, you know, non-moving target. Real easy to hit, you know. It's a lot harder to hit a moving target, you know. So the Japanese pulled in with their ships, fired off a bunch of shells, and sank the uh, Russian fleet in the port. 
because it takes time to build up a fire and then get the water to boil. Ladies, how long does it take to take water from the sink, put it on the stove, and get it to boil? It takes a few minutes, right? Well, the Russian ships couldn't do anything. They were sitting ducks. And the Japanese were there with their shotguns, shooting at those sitting ducks. And they couldn't miss. So, uh, the Russian fleet was pretty much old and antiquated anyways. And the Japanese had modern training and everything, thanks to the British. And if you want to know who gave the uh, Japanese the technology to attack us at Pearl Harbor, believe it or not, the USA and the British. Yeah, they were the ones that gave them all the technology they needed. And guess who gave China all the modern technology? Do you know China has a larger Navy than the United States does now? They have more submarines too. More submarines. And they're modern. Yeah. And who did this? Well, when they shipped all the factories over there, you know, and all the education centers on the West Coast, California State University, Oregon, Washington, full of Chinese nationals, not Chinese ancestry. No, 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 no. Chinese nationals. Yeah. We educated them. You know, this stuff's been going on for a long time. A long time. And God is allowing it because why is all this evil coming upon us? Simple. Because ye have forsaken the Lord thy God. And now he's become your enemy. Think about it. Well, if you are one of the ones that's not called to get beheaded in what is coming, probably under the NOAH, NOAH, and then uh, IDE laws, where those that believe in Jesus are blasphemers, and the penalty is death, those are laws. Penalty is death. Method of execution, beheading. Where have I read that before? Oh, that's right. Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. We just read that. You know what? When the, when the, when the economy collapses, and that's, you know, I took economics in college. I went to business college for two years. I was a dual major, business and computer science. And no, I'm not telling you this to try to make you think how smart I am. I'm just telling you, it's like the Lord's been training me this whole time and I didn't even know it. Because I didn't know him then. He knew me, but I didn't know him. I knew a little bit about him, but I didn't want him. He had to kill me almost to get my attention. But he got my attention. You know, when you're laying in a hospital bed, looking up, and you almost died, uh, you kind of learn, you know, you learn something. Sometimes. Some people do. That's what it took to get my attention. But the thing is, when you start printing paper money, the economy always collapses. Always. Every single time. Without fail. And that's what they're doing now. And all these people think that, oh, cryptocurrency is the way to go. Who do you think is behind cryptocurrency? Bitcoin? They are. The bankers. If the bankers weren't behind all this, it would be illegal. Just like gold was in 1934 when they banned gold. By executive order, FDR, oh yeah. They're behind this. They're getting you ready for cryptocurrency. And we're going to give you probably a chip in your right hand or in your forehead. And guess what? Your government ID, 
your driver's license, your passport, your banking information, and your medical records, your vaccine passport. Yeah, we'll all be on this little thing, probably, maybe, my guess. I'm not, I don't claim to be a prophet. Uh, believe me, I don't. Every time I think I understand what Satan's going to pull, Satan throws me a curveball. That's a baseball term, ladies. Ask, ask a guy that's played baseball. Ball's coming straight up, and you're getting ready to hit it, and then all of a sudden it curves. And you miss it because it turned the other way. Yeah. But there's going to be, when the collapse happens, people are going to be hungry. There's going to be riots. They're planning all this. They're planning all this. And I suspect they're going to bring in United and then the nation's army to patrol the streets. Because after all, I suspect with all the medical treatments that they've given the uh, military, I suspect our military will probably be gone in the next two to five years. That's my guess. That's my guess. But you'll know when the rev uh, tribulation's starting, when there's massive die-offs, that's predicted, and there'll probably be an economic crash, and then there'll be a world leader appear on the scene to save us. Isn't that wonderful? He's going to save us. He's the Savior. He's the Yeshua. But uh, when all these things happen, people are going to realize you, I, we can't stay in the, the city. It's too dangerous. And they're going to flee to the wilderness. And, you know, Matthew 24, when you see the abomination of desolation, flee to the mountains. And I got a Bible study on that too. But, you know, when it happens, those people that went to churches, they're not going to understand. Oh, what's going on? Why, what's, why is all this evil come upon us? Because the USSA, the UK, the EU, and all the rest, ye have forsaken the Lord thy God. And all this evil has come upon us because of all these things. You know, look at the television. I mean, they've been having shows on magic and witchcraft since, uh, I mean, regularly since the 60s. I mean, you had Bewitched. Uh, what was her name? Elizabeth Montgomery. She was a witch. Of course, she was a good witch. Uh, I Dream a Genie. Uh, what was her name? Barbara Eden. That's her stage name. And boy, let me tell you what. I, 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 I know guys that would watch that show just to watch her in her genie outfit. She was, yeah. I'll guarantee that was not a tranny. No. No. Um, and you know, it just on and on and on and on. And when it, when Harry Potter, you know, the story about a wizard outsells books, outsells the Bible, America's in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. We're in trouble. Big trouble. Churches bless those that hate and curse Jesus. Churches bless those that hate and curse Jesus. And if you don't know who I'm talking about, well, figure out, read the crucifixion of Jesus and who it was that uh, demanded he be put to death. And no, it wasn't Pilate. Yeah. I got to be real careful. Keywords. You know, got to be real careful. I want to keep my YouTube channel as up as long as I can but uh honestly people I've made a, a deal with father when YouTube deletes my channel that's it I quit 
no more social media boom that's it and uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do with gab part of me thinks I'm gonna just abandon it although I did load a couple of videos today they were short ones um, but uh, you know when people go into the wilderness they're gonna be asking questions and the Bible says that the Lord is going to take his people into the wilderness where they have a place prepared. And there's going to have to be people to explain why is all this going to, why is all this happening? Why? And it might be some of you, my, some of your jobs to, to explain to them. So if you've got a bug out bag or what do they call it? Uh, get out of town bag uh, I, one of the most important things you could have is a Bible a King James and you should have the covers with certain topics with the um, with the scripture verse place, placing for example when they ask you well who is Israel well that's real easy Galatians 3.29, and if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. How about Matthew 24.13? But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. What about uh, the definition of an antichrist? 1 John chapter 2, verses 21, 22, 23. Who is a liar, but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? Yeah. I mean, these are, you know, uh, when, how do we know what the true Messiah is? The Bible plainly teaches the false Messiah comes first. Plainly. But the preacher of rapture people, they don't believe that. They think Jesus comes first. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 15, 16, and 17, and 18. It says that we have to be caught up in the air to be with the Lord. If you're not caught up in the air with to be with the Lord, it's the wrong Messiah. There's seven trumps in Revelation. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Verses 50, 51, and 52, it tells you we're going to be changed at the last trump. And no, we're not talking about Donald. If there's seven trumps in Revelation, guess what? The first one's not it. The second, third, fourth, and fifth, and sixth is not it. No, the seventh trump is the last one and is at the end of the tribulation. But explain that to the, you know, the pre-trib rapture, once saved, always saved, Jesus loves everybody crowd. No. So it's going to be up to you, some of you, to show them, hey, you guys, uh, why did you, why did you watch TBN? Uh, that's not Bible. That's the Beelzebub Network or Total Blasphemy Network or, yeah, well, you know, or the 700 Prophets of Ball Club, or Bale, or whatever they call it. Yeah. Yeah, if they're on TV, you know they're devils. The church that taught me more than any other place could not get on the television. They tried to get on television, paid for it, and they, they, and they wouldn't do it. Same thing with the radio. I mean, I had a, a I, I'm, I'm not, sh was it Sermon Audio? I forget. It might have been Sermon Audio. I was actually had a paid account and they deleted my channel. Oh, you're too controversial. Uh, really? Quoting Jesus is too controversial? Really? You know, because Jesus was against the you-know-whos more than, well, they were against him. 
So it's going to be up to some of you to explain to these people that never bothered to read their Bible, or if they did, you know, they'd pick a couple verses on Sunday and read it with the pastor, and then, you know, it's sad when you go to a church and they, they read one or two verses and they make an entire hour's half hour or hour sermon out of two verses. Uh, really? So it's going to be your job, possibly, some of you, to explain to these people, why has all this come upon us? But if you think the Antichrist over in the Middle East are God's chosen people and they're going to be the object of Satan's wrath, well, no kidding. No wonder you don't understand. But when you understand that Christians are, are going to be the object of Satan's wrath, and they're going to be here, and that I think, I think they're the chosen, but that's just my opinion, makes total difference. Totally a big difference in, in your outlook on life. So, but uh, why has all this evil come upon us? Hey, a people get the government that they deserve. Read the book of Jeremiah. Read Ezekiel, Isaiah. Read the book of Judges. Why did God allow Israel, northern Israel, to be carried off by the Assyrians? Why did God allow Judah... Jerusalem to be carried off by the Babylonians. Why in the days of Christ did they have the Romans? Why? You get the government you deserve. It's just plain and simple. So, I'm going to uh, probably make this a part one. And uh, I guess I'll do judges. Book of Judges is really, really, it's pretty good. I've done a little bit on Judges. Perhaps you've heard of Deborah. She was a judge, a, a, a ruler in Israel. You know, if God can't find a man with a pure as heart as a woman, he's going to make a woman in charge. And she was a prophetess. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? She was married, and uh, he's only mentioned, I think, one time, the husband. Boy, can you imagine being married to a prophetess? Uh, all I know is, yeah, I think there was an Anna prophetess, too. I think there was like three prophetesses in the Bible. I can't think of a third one, or maybe there was a fourth or fifth. I don't. I don't know. I I can name two off the top of my head. So, some of you people might be a good idea. Get your Bible, and in the cover where it's blank, write down you know in the air, and then put in you know Thessalonians or whatever, and so that if somebody asks you, and put it you know. Hey, Jesus says, you know, Paul says, in the air with Jesus. Or who's Israel? Galatians 3.29. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Not become, not spiritual. No, you are Abraham's seed. And Abraham was the grandfather of Israel. Important. And put that in your bug out bag. Or whatever. I forget what else they call it, but uh, yeah, you know. There'll come a day when uh, it'll all come to pass. I don't know when. Sometimes I think the Lord shows me things and I don't know when, but I know what. And uh, sometimes knowing things is not all it's cut out to be. Knowing that you're 
the great majority of those people that you care about are going to probably be destroyed. I, you know, you think about it. It's rough. It's rough. So, all right, well, this is part one of Forsaken. Why is all this evil coming upon us? And all these idiots that think, oh, if only we could get the elections recertified and get Trump back in office. Uh, no. Or if only we can have voting and, and get some get rid of all the Democrats and get these Republicans in in 2022. You know, if they stole the election in 2020, why can't they steal it in 2022? You know, and Trump is not the savior. He's not the answer. And all these people think, oh, yeah, well, the truck driver is going to go honk, 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 and we're going to get our freedom back. Uh, no, truck drivers are not going to save Canada or this country. You know, they might back off for a while because guess what? Half the country has been given the medical treatment and in two to five years, they're going to be dead anyways. They're not in a rush. They're not in a rush. They're going to take their time. Time is on their side. And with half of us dead uh, and bringing in all the heathens who are all military age, and let me tell you something. Los Angeles train yards. There was a box car uh, full of weapons. Gone. Chicago. Chicago is was I think it still is the largest rail yard uh, hub in the nation. I mean, Chicago has been the rail hub of the nation for at least over 100 years. Do you know in 18, uh, 80, 1980, 1880, and 18, yeah, 1880 or so, the largest city in the United States was Chicago because of all the rail. It was the largest city in the United States. It's still third. Um, New York didn't surpass it until the uh, advent of uh, steel ships and steam, steam liners and all the ports. But all the rail, there's like, I think, uh, like a dozen rail lines that all go to Chicago. There was an entire rail car full of army military hardware i don't know what was in it probably ammo rifles maybe bazookas maybe mortars hand grenades i don't know but an entire rail car vanished it was in the local news in chicago nothing on the national news and let me tell you something you had to have pallet jacks and or forklifts to unload all this stuff. And you had to put it, you know, they just, just didn't walk into there and carry off a pallet on their backs and climb over the fence. No, 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 no. They had to have trucks and pallet jacks and forklifts to move all this stuff around. I mean, you're talking a lot of weight. And I'll guarantee it was at least one truck, if not two or three. I mean, a tractor trailer, I, I don't know what's, let me look that up real quick. All right, I looked it up. There's two different sizes. Uh, but a, but a, a rail car will hold between 70 to 100 tons. A tractor trailer will only hold about 40 tons. So they had to have at least two tractor trailers to haul all that empty that rail car if it was fully loaded, fully full weight. And they hold between... 5,000 to 9,000 cubic feet. All right, a 53-foot uh, tractor trailer is only 3,500 cubic feet. So you would need at least two complete tractor trailers to empty out a boxcar. And that entire boxcar of Army military equipment vanished in Chicago. So somebody knew what was in that car and they had to have the proper equipment 
and they had to have unloaded it and for security not to see it no no cameras you know tractor trailers with forklifts uh, yeah, yeah, somebody unloaded this trailer uh, it wasn't just a fluke you know it wasn't some bunch of some guys bolt cutters cut off the bolt and just grabbed a you know no this was this was a planned planned thing and let me tell you something where'd all those weapons go we're not talking civilian bolt action hunting rifles we're talking military hardware possibly machine guns i was in the military i was in the army uh it, it's cities are going to be dangerous do you know on on average chicago uh there's an average of let's see hold on let me look that up there's an average of over two murders per day in chicago average over over an average of two murders not just people getting shot murders that's just chicago people do you know in 1960 the entire united states had less murders than chicago had last year the entire country and people will say well you know there was a lot more people now than there was back then well that's true but chicago the city of chicago didn't have uh the entire number of the people in entire in the united states since 1960 no the rate of the murders has skyrocketed that don't even include the children's kidnappings and all the other filth and perversions that's been going on god is mad god is angry so there's going to be a remnant in the wilderness some of us are going to be called to give up our heads but you know what you uh get your you get beheaded for christ guaranteed ticket to heaven guaranteed that's like you get on the train with your lifetime unlimited pass and the the the, the conductor punches your ticket and peter meets you at the pearly gates and says come on in boy or girl come on in we've been expecting you but uh yeah but some of us are going to have to tell the churchgoers hey you know bad things are happening because we have a na as a nation have forsaken the lord thy god and you're gonna have to show them from the book and they're gonna have to undo years of brainwashing in your in the demon nominational 501c3 satanic businesses called that they called a church I and mean, it's sickening absolutely disgusting so I'm sorry people you know an hour of Bob rant and raving but please get yourselves prepared physically mentally and most importantly spiritually you know anybody that's not willing to die for Christ Christ I'm sure feels they're not worthy of him Christ died for us we have to be willing to die for him but do you know in Matthew 24 it says pray ye that your flight not be in the winter nor in the Sabbath day so all right uh, Revelation 12 Matthew 24 I'm gonna I'm gonna do uh, put some links in this uh, study and for those of you that don't have it download all my Bible studies they're free I don't charge nothing you know and you get what you pay for and I don't copyright anything by all means uh, if you want to post it or whatever I don't care there's gonna come a day when I'm not gonna be around and I'm nobody special I'm just some clown that read the Bible a couple times that's all 
you know, so I lived the first half of my life for the devil. And I want to give the last half of my life to the Lord and his sheep. Peter asked, was asked by Christ, Peter, lovest thou me more than these? He said, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said, feed my sheep. He asked him that again. Peter, thou son of whatever, lovest thou me more than these? Peter said, thou, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said, feed my lambs. And then the third time Jesus asked him, Peter, lovest thou me more than these? And Peter was grieved. He said, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Let me tell you something, people. Why did he ask him three times? Simple. Peter denied Jesus three times, remember? Yeah. Well, feed the sheep. That's our, some of us have that job. Feed the sheep. And I know this isn't so much a Bible study, but the Bible studies are coming. They're coming. Part two, part three, whatever. So all blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. All glory and honor to him. Amen.